Sure, so I'm Javan, uh, Javan Nagaraja, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Better Dairy. The cattle industry actually emits five times the CO2 as the global aviation industry. When you look at resource use, it's also just not a very good use of resources. You know, cows are just not as efficient at producing milk. You know, we have to give them a lot of water. It takes 650 liters of water to produce one liter of milk. It also used tons of land. You know, we're growing these crops to feed the cows to then get this milk that we then use to make dairy products. And so when you look at plant-based alternatives, a lot of the time, while they are a partial solution, they are often you know, lacking in either nutrition, functionality, or flavor. So while we see big markets made up of these companies, um, it doesn't tackle the underlying problem. You know, something like oat milk is great as a standalone product, but you can't necessarily use it to make things like cheeses or yogurts. You can't use it, you know, in food applications, in formulations. And when you look at the dairy industry, you know, while on the surface it's a lot of consumer products, these things are actually used extensively, you know, in thousands and thousands of items. And so plant-based alternatives just don't plug in there. I think alongside that, you know, it also actually relies on a shift in consumer behavior, you know, and we believe that the way to get to the you know, mass audience and the biggest change is actually swapping like for like ingredients, which allows food producers to give items that are very sustainable, while also consumers have products that they already know and love. So it doesn't actually require that shift in consumer behavior and consumer palate. I think COVID-19 and, you know, I guess the pandemic that's currently going on really actually throws up in the air, um, you know, the food security and the food supply chain and the fact that actually we as people have become so reliant on a very complex supply chain that spans, a, you know, a global landscape. And so as these things start breaking down, as you see in America, you know, with the poultry industry or the meat industry or even dairy farms that are starting to break down, you know, by being able to control one supply chain, it actually is a massive, massive you know, benefit on a country level, on a company level. Um, and these are things that people are just starting to look into a lot more. Um, you know, when you look at traditional farming, it relies a lot on manual labor. And you know, what happens in these pandemic situations when you know, people can't go out to the farm to work? You know, you see in America that they have to slaughter animals or they have to throw away milk because of these supply chains breaking down. So I think as an overall, you know, I think it throws a spotlight into the projects that we're, we're doing. And you know, I think it, it helps us because what we're doing is just empowering these food manufacturers to actually control their supply chain and their food security. So at Better Dairy, we're using synthetic biology and yeast fermentation to make milk in a process very similar to brewing beer. So what we're using is we're using microorganisms that have been engineered to instead of producing their natural products, they're now producing the milk proteins and milk constituents that we need to make our dairy products. So with that, you know, we're doing a lot of experimentation in the lab and we are carrying out very sophisticated engineering of our yeast. The way that our team is actually approaching it is very different to a lot of others out there. We're actually using computational biology alongside our synthetic biology to really accelerate our process. You know, when you look at the products that we're making, um, we're making dairy, which traditionally is not the most expensive ingredient out there. You know, a lot of these scientific processes and synthetic biologies have been used for decades to produce high value proteins for applications like pharma. And so when you're looking at taking on something like food production, you have to be very careful with your unit economics and you have to try and find ways of really driving up your efficiencies and accelerating your R&D. And so computational biology is allowing us to do that. And so alongside the work that we're doing in the lab here, we also have a dry lab setup where in tandem, we are working on the computational side. And so the end goal is really to produce dairy products that taste the same as traditional dairy while also being made in a much more sustainable and efficient way. And so initially, we see a lot of appetite in the market. You know, we see the consumer market that's picked up massively, where customers have actually fueled them, you know, they're fueled by, I guess, their yearning for more sustainable product. And they've already started making shifts towards whether it be plant-based or more sustainable buying behavior. So we're really hoping to tap into that. Yeah, so for us, I think there's a couple of different challenges that we're facing along the way to actually commercializing what we're doing. The biggest challenge is really to produce this efficiently. 
right? While we've had our first successes here at Open Cell three weeks ago, where we produced our first milk proteins and our first milk constituents, we still need to make the process a lot more efficient to actually make it deliverable at the right unit economics. And that really revolves around the engineering and the process that we follow to get that yield upward. And so we've hired some of the best scientists, you know, that, that are currently here in London, and they've joined the team. We've also put together a stellar advisory board spanning Imperial College, UCL, and also a number of um, professionals from industry. With that, we're really trying to tackle this yield problem where, you know, while we can produce dairy products, right, using this technology, really producing it at the price point where customers will be able to buy it off the shelves of supermarkets, will actually be able to be used in food formulations is the big challenge here. And that's entirely what we are gearing ourselves up to solve. Yeah, so the world, right, so, okay, so, with what we're doing, I think there's a number of large impacts that we're hoping to make on the world. When you look at what we're actually building, we're allowing consumers to have the same cheeses that they love, you know, the same milk products, the same yogurts, right? The same quality of life that they've, you know, become accustomed to. And when you look at dairy specifically, it actually resonates with us very closely on a cultural level. Um, you know, it's embedded in civilizations from the west to the east. And so what we're doing is we're enabling people to continue to have these same products while also having the impacts on the environment that we want, you know, on animal welfare that we want. And so this is the only real way to do things because when you look at growing, growing populations, the fact that dairy um, demand is on the rise, um, things are only gonna get worse, right? Whether it be you know, greenhouse gas emissions, the ozone, whether it be animal welfare, you know, these things are all gonna be tackled by us bringing our products to market. So for the last six years, I've been building and scaling food tech companies in the UK and also across Europe. So I've been very passionate about this space and I've been looking at ways to disrupt it in a more meaningful way. In the past, it's really been around technological solutions and software and using that to enable, I guess, the distribution of food and just tightening up some of the inefficiencies there. In a parallel universe, my co-founder, Dr. Christopher Reynolds, has been working on synthetic biology and machine learning and being deploying these technologies to solve some of the world's biggest challenges. So Entrepreneur First was really where the company was seeded and where we were able to really have the um, freedom and also the funding to really explore the idea and unlock its full potential. Following the Entrepreneur First program, we actually got in touch with the guys at Simbi City at Imperial College. Both my co-founder Chris and myself are alumni of Imperial College and that allowed us to get into you know, some of the world-class facilities that they have there and do you know, some high throughput experimentation, which is really helping us, you know, I guess, accelerate our R&D. Alongside that, you know, we were also exploring other lab facilities. And when you look at you know, COVID-19, uh, the fact that it's caused a lot of university campuses to close down, um, we ended up having to you know, vacate our labs at Simbi City. And that's where Open Cell really came into fruition for us, you know, providing us with the laboratory space at a very quick turnaround time and all the necessary facilities for us to continue operating throughout this pandemic. I think the team here has also been fantastic in making sure that we've been set up for success all the way from even before we took up occupancy right through to the weeks during the pandemic, even to present day, where we need access to different you know, facilities, different equipment, and they've just been very, very facilitating while going through the pandemic themselves. So I think one thing is, is really the community that they've provided. I think alongside that, having our own bespoke space at a pretty reasonable price point is a big draw for us being an early stage startup. You know, the sole occupancy is very useful for us in this pandemic, you know, because we can continue to operate while also, you know, being mindful of the, you know, the health of our staff and the security and safety there. You know, when you look at the equipment that they have here, for the very modest um, price that we pay per month, we actually also get access to a lot of you know, good equipment that we need to actually progress our science. So whether that be incubators or shake glass or you know, the right refrigerators, for an early stage startup, these are things that are just prohibitive for us to buy ourselves. And so the guys of Open Cell have provided it to us. I think you know, we'll definitely be here as long as we can be um, as we make our way to the next steps of the company.